looking at something. All right, folks, so we are on the last page of the notes. And as you are looking at number three, you'll notice that it is a piecewise function and that we have all these bound statements again. But there's a significant amount of them this time, lots of different function pieces. But the big difference between step piecewise functions and just regular piecewise functions is what the functions themselves are. So if you look at the equation parts for these, they are all constant values with no input for x. So all constant values. So they are all horizontal lines. Now, we're going to start these problems by showing the same work that we had on piecewise functions, just by making our table, looking at the bound values. But then we're going to start showing less work on these because since they are constant values, we don't really have to generate all those points like we did for our lines. So these are constant values. So let's go ahead and make a table just for that first one. f of x equals negative 4. And f of x equals negative 3. We'll maybe show two tables of work so that maybe you can start to see the patterns on this one. So the first order of business on this problem is looking at all those if statements. We're going to have quite a few bound lines. We'll have 1 at negative 7. We'll have another at negative 4. There's negative 4 again. Negative 1 comes next. Negative 1 again. 1 at 2. 2 again. <coughs> and then another at 5. Five again, another at eight, oh boy. And then, oh good, there's one off the grid at 11. So there's 10, here's 11. That's a lot of that one. Now, one thing that we'll have to be especially careful of here as we start showing less work is the open and the closed dots. And we'll see that in action once we start making our first table. So our first table is going to start with the bound value of negative 7. Open dot or closed dot for that one? Closed dot. And then negative 4, open dot or close dot. That one is less than 4, so we'll have an open dot at that bound value. And then we pick something in between. So what's something between negative 7 and negative 4? Negative 6, negative 5, doesn't matter what you pick. Let's go ahead and pick one. So now when I go to plot this, it starts at negative 7 with a closed dot, and then negative 5 with a regular dot, and negative 4 with an open dot. Folks, what are we going to have for the y value of all of these? Negative 4. So f of x equals negative 4 is the same as y equals negative 4. So we are going to autofill that y column with negative 4. <coughs> Let's see. So negative 4, negative 4, negative 4. So on our graph, backwards 7, down 1, 2, 3, 4, with a regular dot. Down 5, down 4, or sorry, left 5, down 4. And then left 4, down 4, open dot. And when we connect those dots, what you'll see is that we have <coughs> just a horizontal line from bound line to bound line that goes closed 
to open. And folks, if I look at all of these different kind of sandwich bound statements, they all go closed to open. So I start with a closed dot from the left side and then all of them will have an open dot on the right side. And because these are all constant functions, they will all make these little horizontal line steps. So let's try it with our next one. We've got f of x equals negative three. My bound values are negative four and negative one. With a closed dot at negative four, and an open dot at negative one, and something in between, negative two, negative three. And what are we gonna put in the Y column? Negative threes all the way down. So if F of X equals negative three, that is the only thing that Y can be equal to, a constant value all the way down. So backwards four, <coughs> down three, close dot. Backwards two, down three, close down. Backwards one, down three, open that. So folks, if you don't wanna do the shortcut, you can literally make a table for every single constant part of this function. But what you're gonna find is that the shortcut does make it a bit more efficient because all of these are going to be horizontal bars that go from close to open with their dots. So folks, we're gonna try to attempt the next part of the table, or sorry, the next part of the piecewise function without using a table. So first it says f of x equals negative two. Where is my horizontal step going to be? At a y value of negative two. The step goes from close to open, bound line to bound line. So I find that y value of negative two, and then I go close to open between the bound lines and connect those dots. And there's my step. And I didn't have to make the whole table. Looking at our next piece, this one is going to be a step at negative one because that's what would autofill the y values. So we go to negative one, which is right here, we go to our bound line at two, close dot. Our bound line at five, open dot. And all those values in between will have a y value of negative one. And again, if you're like, nope, I'd rather make the tables, you go for it, you make those tables. Moving on to our next function piece, we'll have a y value of zero. So here I am sitting on the x-axis. Our first bound line is at five, regular dot because of the less than or equal to, and then to our other bound line with an open dot. Connect those dots and we have made our step. Let's go ahead and do our last one. F of x equals one. So here's my y value of one. We start at the bound line at eight, closed or opened up. Close dot. And we go all the way to the bound line at 11 and make the step. And we have now made that piecewise step function. How many of you think you'll probably still make the tables for these? <coughs> How many of you like the shortcut? All right, good to know. Let's go ahead and, um, folks, that is the last problem in the notes. Give yourself a high five. Hooray. And we are going to go back to the guided practice for... One last time. So very back page of the guided practice. And again, folks, these packets will be different colors for the next unit to make going back and forth and shuffling around a little bit easier. So folks, let's go ahead and start this one. First, how do I identify this as a step function and not just a regular old piecewise function? All the equation parts, f of x equals, f of x equals, f of x equals, all of those are just equal to a solid number. So I've got y equals a number or horizontal lines for all of these. That's how I know it's a step function. 
which means less work. Although sometimes more work because there's so many different little steps and things like that last time. Folks, why is number two not a step function? We did that one already, Ms. Carver. No, but why is it not a step function? Because there's x's involved in those equations. So yes, the top piece is a constant function, but the middle one and the last one have x inputs, so those are going to be slanted line, and we don't want to climb up slanted steps. Step functions have flat, horizontal steps. So step one, let's draw in our bound lines. Negative <coughs> 5, bound line. Negative 3, bound line. Negative 3, again. Negative 1, bound line. Negative 1, again. 1, bound line. 1, again. And then 3. Now, before we start drawing in our steps, the only thing we're really losing out in the tables is the closed dot and open dot. But all of these steps will go bound line to bound line. So let's start there and say, are my steps going to be going closed to open or open to close? Closed to open. So I'm going to go ahead and just draw this, that it goes from closed to open. And I can see all those less than or equal to stacking up, all those less than stacking up. So every step will go from closed to open. Because it's really easy to forget about those open dots when you are doing those steps. But remember, without the open dots, those aren't going to be functions anymore because you'll have two closed dots stacked on top of each other, and then it fails the vertical line test. So let's go ahead and start with our first step. We've got f of x equals negative 1. So I'm going to go to a y value of negative 1 and start at my bound value of negative 5, which is right here, with a closed dot. Then we'll have an open dot at my next bound line and a step in between. Try the next step on your own. So this constant function will be at zero. That tells us the y value or where that horizontal line will be. So horizontal line at zero, but it starts with a closed dot at the bound line of negative three, and then it extends to an open dot at the bound value of negative one. And don't forget to actually draw the step in between, otherwise you just have two floating dots. We need to show that they are connected by that horizontal line. Let's go ahead and do the next one. f of x equals 1. So here's my y value of 1, but we start with a closed dot at negative 1, <coughs> and then an open dot at that bound line at positive 1. Our last happy step that we have, f of x equals 2. So where's my y value of 2? Right here. We start with a closed dot at 2. This pen does not work. Closed value of 2. And then we extend 2, 3. Folks, do we have any arrows at all on step functions? Nope. They will always be closed off, bound line to bound line pieces that make horizontal line steps. No arrows at all. Folks, do you have any questions on those? You should now be able to do hashtag the rest in that purple packet, in your homework packet. And those two pages are due tomorrow night, but I would try to get a good head start on them and get as much of them done in class time now.
Um, and I'm going to give you the rest of the class and the working group. Maybe we'll introduce the noun project. I don't know. We'll see how far it leads. <laughs> yes. Yes. Okay, let's have you practice maybe. Um, how do you know? Now you know how to. Ten minutes. I just want to knock out this test before we take the next one. Yeah. I'll set a clock. I'll set a timer for ten minutes and then I'll bring it back in. My phone won't work. So ten. So what's everybody doing for character day tomorrow? The entire school is going to cent. <laughs> everybody? So what does dressing like 50 cent look like? It's not a new character. It's a 50 cent. So what does that mean? What are you guys going to wear? Uh, I'll trade them all. <laughs> I can't wait. <laughs> 